dear young brothers and sisters of the new generation of hindustan namaskar in today's episode of our exploration of the true history of hindustan let us have a look on the difference between the culture of hindustan and the culture of the rest of the world when we talk about culture we can define it as the attitude and behavior of a certain population or a society evolved developed grown up updated refined and fine tuned results of the wisdom knowledge and intelligence of that particular population or that particular society of a particular geographic region so in this way we have an approximate idea which is almost complete about what is meant by culture and as at present when we mention about culture mainly two cultures are taken into consideration that is the western culture and the eastern culture the western culture is the european culture which was later exported to all those continents invaded and possessed by the europeans and as far as the eastern culture is concerned the culture of hindustan is considered as the representative of the eastern culture in addition to this when we talk about culture there are also cultures related to the religions such as islamic culture as well as christian culture and the christian culture is almost completely dissolved in the european culture so these are some basic idea regarding the culture of various population when we consider or compare the western culture to the eastern culture or the european culture to culture of hindustan or arsha bharatam we have a documented testimony to make a comparison between these two cultures it is taken from the bible itself so it is authentic it is clearly written in the bible that when jesus christ was born three kings from the east came to visit jesus christ based on their extraordinary knowledge and experience in astrology and astronomy those kings could identify a particular star which announced the birth of an extraordinary personality in the world and based on their calculations they also identified more or less the place where this extraordinary child could be born and they thought naturally this was a prince so several months in advance to the birth of jesus christ they planned prepared and started their journey towards the birthplace of jesus christ and finally they reached palestine and they found this poor jesus christ in a very pathetic condition in a cattle shed they were respected maybe in a palace a royal palace but they found this child in a cattle shed with his parents almost peasants abandoned without any possibility to have a better settlement to give birth to jesus christ so this was the situation those three kings witnessed but even then they could identify the nobility of this child in that particular condition and having identified the nobility of this child they knelt in front of him worshiped this child and presented their gifts which were most precious objects of that period that was gold mirra and incense so during that period these were most precious objects to be presented and royal presentation we know that 700 years before the birth of jesus christ the first university 
ever existed on the surface of this planet was in Hindustan, and that was in Takshashila. More than 10,000 students from various uh, geographic regions such as Japan, Korea, China, Egypt, Greece, etc. were studying there. So with 100% rationality, we can conclude that at least one of these kings was from Hindustan. Considering their behavior, their ability, their knowledge, their wisdom, and their approach, we can confirm that was a typical example for the Eastern culture. And now we'll be look into the Western culture related to the same event. That is, when King Herod, who was the representative of the Roman emperor, when he heard about the birth of an extraordinary personality in Palestine, he ordered to cut the throats of all the male children below two years of age to annihilate them. That is an excellent example for the Western culture, which still prevails. We have another example from the history to compare the Western culture to the culture of Hindustan. That is the invasion of Alexander of Macedonia up to Asia Minor. So this person is known as Alexander the Great. For them, he was great. But considering the culture, nobody can accept that Alexander of Macedonia shall be nominated as Alexander the Great. Probably for this reason, our Sadhguru has completed his name as Alexander the Great Idiot. Okay, let us keep it apart. Anyway, what I was trying to make you reflect is that the West had always in its culture, invasion, looting, plundering, destroying the rest of the world. At the same time, that is during the period of the invasion of Alexander up to Hindustan, Chandragupta Maurya was the emperor of the Maurya Empire. And Chanakya was his advisor also. And the Maurya Empire was in the maximum of its splendor and glory at that period. So Chandragupta Maurya was many times more powerful, more efficient, and more rich compared to the Alexander of Greece. Suppose if he had the idea as that of a person of the Western culture, Chandragupta Maurya could have invaded the whole world and kept under his possession, under his feet. But he didn't do that. Why? Because the culture was consolidated on the fact or the principle that the whole world is a single family. Vasudhaiva Kudumbagam. So you want to go and attack another member of the same family. Again, the culture of Hindustan was also based on another fundamental that Doka Samasta Sukhino Favan. So these were the two reasons why no king, very efficient, powerful kings like Raja Raja Chola, Chandragupta Maurya, Vikramaditya, so none of them had the intention to go and take away something of another, another member of the family. So these were see the nobility. And as far as the Islamic culture is concerned, I think better not to mention it because the historical facts demonstrate that Islamic culture is a synonym of invasion, looting, plundering, uh, destruction, forced conversion of to the, their religion, so on and so forth. The knowledge, experience, and wisdom of Hindustan and its culture in every field, such as economic, social, scientific, technical, spiritual, and all related fields are also documented by thousands of acharyas in thousands of books and during thousands of years. A vast majority of such documentation was totally destroyed during the invasions 
intentionally destroyed by the invaders. Let us have a look on the memories or some of the examples of such documentation. These are examples of the Vedic text written since 6000 BC. Vedic doesn't mean only spiritual, but all fields of possible and imaginable activities of human race, such as technical, scientific, economic, spiritual, everything is included in our Vedas. And these are examples of single pages of these vast documentations with very beautiful and attractive cover pages also. See how much care was paid, how much work was done to prepare documentation in this way. When the Islamic force invaded and destroyed the University of Takshashila, they lit fire to the library of that university and it remained burning for almost three months as it is recorded in the history. So we can imagine the enormous quantity of documents like this burned out during that episode. Now we already have an exhaustive outlook and comparison of the culture of Hindustan to that of the rest of the world. Similar documentation was not available in any part of the world in that period. And what all developments in all fields happened in Europe, they happened only during and after the Renaissance period. So compare the time span also related to the culture of Hindustan and the culture of the West. We can frankly affirm that when the British or when the Europeans were totally naked, running after the wild pigs to hunt them, Hindustan was far advanced. So this fact we shall not forget. This also is an example or a proof of the vastness, the richness and the nobility of the culture of Hindustan. And if you find or if you feel that these are important information that uh, son or a daughter of Hindustan should understand, please share it with your friends and relatives. And also try to subscribe this channel so that you won't lose any of the episodes which I will be posting because this is a series of episodes I would like to conduct. So thank you very much for your kind attention. Jai Hind.